Well, good morning. It's a joy to speak with you this morning. We are now in the last chapter of 2 Timothy, um, first eight verses. It was the it was my senior year in high school, and it was the final football game of the season. For we who were seniors, it was not only the last home game, but it was the last game that most of us would ever play in uniform. It had been a good season, but it had come really close to being a great season. As we waited for the moment when we were to take the field, our, our coach gave us his locker room talk. It was the usual encouragement to execute our assignment and play until you hear the whistle blow. Then he turned his attention to the seniors on the team and and he said something that has stuck with me even after all these years. He said, you seniors, this is the last opportunity you'll have to represent your school on, on the football field. What you do tonight will not be just for this evening but it will be for the rest of your lives. Whatever you do, remember this, finish well. You'll never be able to go back and do this over. This isn't practice, this is real. Don't leave the job unfinished, finish well. Well, those words of the late coach Doug Henderson rang in my memory throughout my life. Whether I have been wrapping up a semester in school, closing out an appointment I have been serving, attempting to conclude a sermon or something else, uh, I have been reminded to finish well. That thought has lingered in my brain. Have I always done it? I think you can probably figure out the answer to that question. No. However, There have been those moments in which I have felt a sense of accomplishment for having given my best effort to a particular task with the hope of finishing well. In those moments, even if they are accompanied by weariness and fatigue, there is a sense of peace and satisfaction. Today's reading describes such a moment for Paul. As he gives his locker room talk to Timothy via the epistle we have been reading, he says, I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. It sounds just a little like finish well doesn't it? This reminds me of other words that Paul has spoken that we find in Galatians chapter 6. He says, let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap the harvest at harvest time if we do not give up. Do you think Paul was ever tempted to simply give up? In 2 Corinthians 11, he reminds us that he was beaten three times with rods. Once he was pelted with stones, three times he was shipwrecked and spent a night in a, a night and a day in the open sea. Still, he finished the race. When hardship and tragedy drag on and on, it's hard not to give up. In those times, When all of life is being challenged on all sides, it's hard to remember to finish the race. As a friend of mine once told me, when you're waist deep in alligators, it's hard to remember that your initial purpose was to drain the swamp. According to Paul, the purpose of of the race that he was running um, and the purpose of the race that Tim is called to run as well as we ourselves, is to do the work of an evangelist, to carry out our ministry fully. So how are we doing at running the race? Well, consider these questions. Question number one, where along the proverbial path 
is it most difficult for you to run the race? Question two, finishing well is a relative term. It can be a reference to a day, a reference to a year, or maybe even a life. Where do you need to be reminded to finish well? Question three, what does it mean for you to do the work of an evangelist? Well, in this new normal of which we are part, I trust that you'll go out and be the church in changing times. Be blessed and be a blessing. Go in peace.